Hello, guys, and welcome to another episode of Crypto Twins Q&A here on Coin Bureau Clips. GM Jess, how are you doing? Good morning. Good, Back good. by popular demand, Back by guys. popular demand. Are you excited for some Q&A today? I'm always ready for a Q&A, yeah, yeah. and these are good questions this week. These a few tough good. ones. Some tough ones and some exciting ones and some updates as well. Um, but guys, I just have to let you know that um, contrary to uh, Guy's opinion from the Wednesday live <laughs> stream, we are in fact not the same person. Um, and as a result of his low blow comment, <laughs> we have decided we're going to give you a little surprise in this Q&A. And we're going to go and take a look and give some commentary on some old director's cut thumbnails that we decided to move out not being published. Uh, and we're going to be presenting them to you and maybe give some commentary on it. So we're going to get some sweet revenge there. Some sweet revenge because, <laughs> hey, who says yeah. we're better? Yeah. I'm excited. This is a little weekend treat for all of you as well because yeah. I've not seen some of these thumbnails. Some of them she has and some of them are to be revealed. So they'll yeah. be a completely authentic. Reaction. And I could hear you laughing in your office yesterday. <laughs> so it set the bar. There, there's quite a lot of them, um, you know, but, you know, we'll keep some in reserve in case any more of these comments. <laughs> any more comes up. We need them yeah. in a the backlog, you know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so we look forward, we're going to look forward to that. Uh, but let's dive right in uh, with the first question. And this is from Ed Foster 7. Mm -hmm. And he's asking, what X are most thinking this bull run will bring for BTC? I think Ed is asking what percent do we think we're going to see this bull run, yeah, right? Yeah. So I thought we'd just dive into a little bit of some previous price predictions from some other people before we lay the foundation. I'm also curious to hear your Bitcoin yeah, price yeah, prediction sure. as well, what kind of numbers we're looking at. Um, so first of all, I'm going to start optimistic, aiming high with Kathy Wood, who is it predicting in year 2030, so six years from now, $1.5 million of Bitcoin, which is... Oof, that's ambitious. Bold. Yeah, Penny that's is bullish. That's, she's bullish. Um, and then, so for anyone that hasn't seen the Bitcoin price prediction video that you guys have on the main channel, maybe we'll add that in the description for you guys to check it out. There is a full deep dive into different price predictions and the how and the why to they get to those figures. Um, Galaxy, a lot more reserved. They're predicting that if we see $14 billion of ETF inflows this year. We're already at 9.7 now. So yeah. we're already one month in recording some pretty solid um, like it looks like it's going to be a breeze to get to 14 billion. Yeah, I think even over opinion. 10 over the most recent flows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, that will be a price prediction of around um, 50 to 73 thousand dollars. Yeah. Well, we're already over 53. I mean, 50. So yeah, not too far from that. Standard Charter end of year is $120,000 per one Bitcoin. And then Matrix Port is end of year $125,000 a Bitcoin. So that is some of the foundations for obviously spot Bitcoin ETFs, the halving coming up. I'm kind of expecting that between $75,000 per Bitcoin and $95,000, I'm going to start to take some profit around $75,000. $75,000. Yes. Is that um, for this year or the top of the cycle? Because the cycle probably will extend into next year. Yes, correct. So... My kind of, and this is actually shout out to Ben from Into the Cryptoverse. Mm -hmm. So he has a DCAing out of crypto kind of allocation and it helps you allocate where and when you should start to move out. So I'm going to start DCAing out at $75,000 a Bitcoin and try and run that through into a little bit higher. Okay, cool. No, that's a good selection. Um, yeah. 75. So your price taking is 75 starting. And, but do, where do you think? So you think over 100,000 towards the end of the cycle? Yes. So I'm aiming to have around 50% of my BTC cashed out at around $90,000 of Bitcoin. And then I'll evaluate. I think there's social metrics that we can look at as well, which will really help give an indication. It's so hard just to judge based on price. I think we mentioned this before. It's like 2017, everyone was like, oh, $10,000 of Bitcoin. That's my price exit yeah. point. That's how much I'm expecting it to go to. It blew the top off to 17,000 in just a few days afterwards. Yeah. And then everyone thought, oh, could $20,000 Bitcoin happen? Yeah, and then so, none of us took profits. Yeah, exactly. And we were all left so holding our bags. Just a little, bit of hold, a, hold, a little bit longer, you know, why not? Just a little bit longer. No know? more, guys. No more. Uh, really, I want to retire soon. Yeah. Sorry, I'll stay a few more years, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> what about you? Yeah, so obviously also um, there are a few price predictions that came out, um, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, could be helpful to inform an analysis. Um, so one of them um, was the likes of uh, CryptoQuant this week. Uh, released a price prediction. So CryptoQuant is a, a data analytics firm and they uh, do a lot of on-chain metrics and analysis. 
and they released a price prediction that took a look at the market value to realized value Z score. So this is basically like just looking at some sort of a concept of fair value of Bitcoin, mm -hmm. i.e. the market value to the realized value, realized value being the most recent price that Bitcoin moved on chain. So they look at the ratio in previous bull cycles. And um, according to that, the, the re ratio at the peak of the previous bull cycle was 3.9. Okay. So market value to realized value. So that would imply if we're going to assume a price of about 50K that um, we know we're going to an historic, if you take in that and you're extracting out the price now in terms of when it will have a peak market value to realized value, they assume a price of about 112K this market cycle, right? Or, and towards the end of this year. So that's yeah. this year. So that's one price prediction. Another one is um, by a famous OG in the crypto space, Tur Tur Aww, de Mista. Do you know? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, do do you know Tur de Mista? No. Yeah. So he's um, he's been in the, in the space for quite some time, a Bitcoin OG, and he actually came out in the pre 2019, mm -hmm. and he predicted the top of the previous cycle. Okay. So, this is good. So he's got one price prediction under, under his, his belt. belt. He wasn't a. It's he wasn't be two just million a million in 2020. Million, exactly. He wasn't changing all the way from 2017. He's had one shot. So so yeah. far his hit ratio is okay, and he said that uh, by 2026 mm -hmm. we had 600k. Based on, you know, that's a big old number, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not too far away. So, you know, I think that that's within two years. And then if you think Kathy would at 1.5 in 2030, you know, mm -hmm. now the question is, is this going to still be within the current cycle of 2026? Um, I don't know. I mean, if you expect the current cycle goes to 2025, I don't know if it will extend out to 2026. But he's basing that on the assumption that you have a wide scale banking crisis. Okay. Um, so, but, you know, that's, that's his assumption. It's also quite difficult to determine as well how long this cycle will last exactly. because this cycle seems that things are starting to heat up earlier than you would expect yeah, normally sort of after before. the halving. Yeah, after the halving, exactly. Yeah. And the ETF, but I think that was because of the ETF flows mm -hmm. for sure. So it was coming sooner than expected. Yes. If you were to ask me my price prediction, mm -hmm. um, I think that... <laughs> Tell us all. Tell you all. I'm pulling up my crystal ball, you know, and so... I think that what I like to look at is, you know, where has Bitcoin rallied out of previous halving cycles, right? So, um, and in the months that followed the previous halvings, from the from the halving to the market top, um, and in 2012 it was at 185 percent. Mm -hmm. In the 2016 halving it was 122 percent, and the 2020 halving it was by over 300 percent. Yeah. So, if you were to even be very conservative and say, you know. Uh, use the, the lowest rate, the lowest um, uh, percentage rally out of a halving as 2016 at 122%. And a 50K uh, Bitcoin price right now, if you assume, now we're at 52, but like let's assume even at 50K mm -hmm. at the halving. Yeah. You know, we're talking about above $110,000, $114,000 in at the top of the next cycle. So that's where I'm thinking I'm putting my number at 100000 over 100,000 before the end of the year, and then 114,000 by the top of the next cycle. Could go even more because, like I say, that's a very conservative estimate mm -hmm. for halving from, from the halving till the peak. Um, and uh, there's many other factors going on, but I'm being conservative here. So, yeah. And you have quite a lot of your holding in Bitcoin. You have your portfolio percentage, yeah. on the Coin Bureau Club. Are you going to be exiting out? Are you going to try and always keep some Bitcoin? Are you able to share a little bit with us? I guess it's a question of like, I don't really know at this stage, right? I haven't formulated my exit strategy because I'm in crypto for the long term and I mm -hmm. do believe in the long term uh, value of Bitcoin, right? So it's yeah. uh, unless I really need to start diversifying and start looking and buying other assets, mm -hmm. uh, I won't be looking to exit. I'll be obviously DCA and out of Bitcoin will be strategically allocated to alts and whatnot. But maybe there is a time of which I just do decide, look, this time I want to take a bit more profit out of Bitcoin. I'm going to start DCA and out. If I was to do that, it would probably also similarly be out this pre- Pre top of the previous all-time highs. So, I mean, it's like 70,000 70, I'll start. Yeah. But at this stage, I don't think I have a need to DCA out right now because um, I You're not trying to buy an island somewhere in not the Caribbean island, yet. Uh, not, not just yet, no. No islands, Lambos, or yachts just yet. But you never know. You know, I may get my midlife crisis and then sell all my Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> red that, Ferrari, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, red Ferrari. <laughs> There we go. Okay, Ivan Billick, eighty-five. Where can I relocate to from the UK to minimize taxes on cryptocurrency? Hmm, that's an interesting one. I mean, we definitely have some experience in this because a lot of the team members moved from the UK uh, to Dubai two years ago. 
Um, now, there are a lot of countries you can go to to minimize your taxes, right? And we've actually got an entire uh, written piece on coinbureau.com with over 15 different countries, crypto-friendly countries, from the perspective of taxes. I can give you a quick overview, TLDR of a few of them. Mm -hmm. In Europe, Germany, Portugal, they don't have crypto taxes for crypto assets held for longer than a year. Slovenia has actually passed similar laws recently. Um, you've also got, um, if you're not thinking about Europe, you've got Puerto Rico in the US. Yeah. If you become a resident there, don't have to pay a capital gains tax. UAE, obviously, where we are. Um, you know, if you're thinking about more expensive but also well-known tax uh, locations, Singapore and Switzerland, both very great places, mm -hmm. uh, but very expensive. Yes. Yeah, to live in. So that's it. And then other places potentially, Bermuda, Costa Rica, mm -hmm. other places in South America, Vanuatu. Oh. Have you ever been to Vanuatu? I actually don't know is where it on is. Your, <laughs> <laughs> is it on your bucket list of places to visit? I, yes. Vanuatu. Where Just is it? A, it's down in the South Pacific, like right near the bottom of this. Near, I think it's near New Zealand. Oh, okay. Don't, don't quote me, but uh, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's necessarily on my bucket list, but it's a place. They also do sell passports uh, for oh, crypto investors. Okay. Crypto investors know. could buy passports for Vanuatu. Um, so there's a lot of places. And I'll, like I said, we'll link to the blog below so you guys can take a look at uh, some of the other places and we'll give some analysis. And it's a really good piece. One thing I will say, though, for you moving from the UK, and I'm sure it's like this for a lot of other, other countries. Mm -hmm. You can't just like leave your country with your crypto and then go to another country, claim tax residency, and then cash your gains and then go back. You're going to have to pay your exit tax. You know, an HMRC wants their pound of flesh. They probably will. You know, if you're thinking you're going to exit and not pay them what you've been earned, what you've earned in terms of crypto and the gains you've gained, it's going to be difficult to prove that. And also, you have to consider the fact that if you live in, leave in the UK, I know probably similar to other places, yeah. and you leave in their tax net. Uh, you're not allowed to go back to the UK for over a certain period of time without, um, you know, without actually like breaching their laws. So I think it's, it's 90 days or something within a year. Yes. So some of the team members have to be careful about how long they spend within the UK. And they watch the stuff, guys. I don't know. I've heard stories of people that stayed an extra day or two and they got a bill from HMRC. Yeah. The UK are really coming through for people in, mm. right now. So this is why... You UAE know. is a safe haven. It's a safe haven, yeah. But make sure you do everything correctly. Yes, you don't want to have book. to worry about it in the future. Um, but yeah, if you are looking at it, there's many other places. Yeah, come to Dubai. Yeah. My dad is a UK accountant and actually he does start to ask me kind of like December, January. He's like, like, oh God, all of my like clients are asking how to file their crypto tax yeah. returns. I'm like, well, you should have listened to me when I'm explaining all these long words and cryptocurrency yeah. names, yeah, dad. Exactly. Well, you can show them some crypto tax tools. Yeah. Deals page. True. Deals page. Deals page, guys. <laughs> I was trapped inside a cage. A cage made out of the daily grind. I was so unfulfilled. I felt like a blank sheet of A4 paper. Something was missing from my life, but I didn't know what. But then I found what I'd been missing. The Coin Bureau deals page was the answer to my prayers. It had everything I needed to make me complete exchange sign-up bonuses of up to $50,000. The biggest discount on the best hardware wallets. Trading fee discounts of up to 60% on the best crypto exchanges. Exclusive Outcoin Alpha. Thank you, Coin Bureau, for bringing me back to life. Cool, next question. Now, this is an interesting thought experiment, yes. right? And this is from VEE, -E, and they're asking, or she or he is asking, if Bitcoin is forked by TradFi to create a new regulated POS version or proof of stake version, mm -hmm. what would you do? What would I do? There are so many different elements to this question. Yeah. So first of all, what would a forked regulated version look like? I mean, it'd probably be like one where, um, you know, they're, so they're, man, they're maintaining it. And, you know, in order to actually transact, if it has to be done to approved KYC address yes. uh, with one of the large TradFi institutions, mm -hmm. uh, it would, validators would need to be KYC'd as well. So the validators on the network are only uh, approved TradFi institutions. Yeah. Um, that's what one could assume, you know, and completely controlled by them. Uh, if you do anything... You can look on the extremes if they think that you're the kind of person who uh, your political views become a bit slanted and they want to keep you in line. They can stop your transactions going through. The big red button. Yeah, there's many ways in which they can try and control it, if they can. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
um, then is a fork actually something that would be able to happen? Is it possible? So we remember we were looking back at the 2017 block wars. So the first fork for Bitcoin was around 2015, 20, 2014, 2015, that was Bitcoin XT. And we have seen numerous hard forks and also soft forks on the Bitcoin network. The more notable hard forks, we've got Bitcoin Cash um, and then Bitcoin Gold as yeah. well. But actually to have that, there is a huge undertaking of kind of block wars that goes on yeah. for, the, for the fork to take place. And would that be able to happen? Would you get the Bitcoin devs on your fat side to be able to even undergo the process of a hard fork? Well, uh, definitely not the Bitcoin uh, devs, the maintainers, because they strong crypto cypherpunks. And like, if you mm -hmm. re recall back to the, the, the block wars back in 2017, so in that stage, it wasn't what well, they were disagreeing was the size, of the block size. So they wanted to increase the block size. Yes. Um, and there was a strong bit of dispute and the, neither maintainers nor any of the large Many people didn't support the, the hard fork, and as a result, you had Bitcoin Cash. But think about what, the, what he's asking. So it's like proof of stake version. Do you honestly think if they're not even going to support an increase in the block size, that they would support a TradFi takeover of, to completely change the consensus mechanism? Like, no way. No way. And more importantly, if you're going to have a new f f chain, the miners who support the current chain, right, they're not going to go and support proof of stake chain. Why? Because then they can't. It's not, they can't mine it, right? So they're not running a validator. Like mm -hmm. they got their mining machine. So they're going to continue supporting the current Bitcoin chain, right? Yeah. So they wouldn't support it. And I don't think any of the other service providers, exchanges, merchants, all the people, the node operators, most of the people that support the Bitcoin network, it's incredibly decentralized in terms of like power when you think about it, really, right? It's all the, like we say, the maintainers, the developers, the miners, the node operators, the service providers. To be able to uh, to support a new chain, you're going to have to get all of them on your side. Yes. And why would they do that? I'm sure though, centralized TradFi have had this conversation probably like five or six years ago. Mm. They sat down and went, well, well, can't we just fork Bitcoin and make our own? No. But this is why now we are seeing centralized blockchains that are under control of central banks and banking institutions that yeah. are building on their own blockchain rails because you cannot regulate and fork Bitcoin from the TradFi scene. You can't, you can't. Other one thing that would worry about them, a little bit more, a little bit easier in terms of central or taking over control of a network is current proof of stake chains. Mm -hmm. So it's like all you need in that sense is you need to control a certain amount of the cryptocurrency to, and run, spin up as many validators and you get kind of control. That's why there's been concerns around potentially like ETH, for example, right? Like could a BlackRock, if they accumulate enough of Ethereum, yes. be enough to control the network? So yeah, I mean, it's an interesting thought experiment. Don't think it's going to happen, but um, yeah. Next question. Okay, so Roman 93, alts to rally with BTC or after? Hmm. Yeah, no. So um, definitely altcoin season. I think most of the time altcoin season comes after Bitcoin. That's the general flow of the markets, right? And we, I don't think we're in altcoin season. I, I don't know if you, I don't, I don't think there's any reason to, to say we're in altcoin season right now. Well, we have seen a, quite a few all-time highs we for have. altcoins coming through. But I think if we remember the altcoin rallies that we've known from 2017 and 2021, these were kind of 13 to 20% gains mm. every single day for like a kind of consecutive yeah. two or three day period. Yeah. And then there would be a little lull. The market movements were a lot crazier than what we're seeing now. But this is a nice warm up, I would say. Yeah, it's a warm up. And there are, and there's also, but to be honest, although there's a lot of altcoins that are now newer altcoins mm -hmm. and some of them that have gone over previous all time highs, there are still a lot of altcoins, especially some of the larger altcoins who know who's still not near their all time highs. Yes, correct. Um, and um, also in terms of just like indicators, why I don't, altcoin season generally comes with retail as they're rotating out of Bitcoin into altcoins. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen many indicators that retail is here. I don't think retail is here because for one, Google trends don't show a large interest in cryptocurrency for two. Uh, social metrics and social media metrics that we can see this some of the size of the growth of our channel compared to sizes that we saw in the previous bull cycle compared to now. It's not the same. Yes. Um, trading volumes as well. Um, Bitcoin dominance has been going up quite aggressively since the beginning of the year, which is obviously people, all the Bitcoins increasing in price relative to altcoins. So most of these factors are showing that it's not an altcoin season yet, but you will know when it's an altcoin season. You know, Absolutely. One of those things you don't need to estimate there's an altcoin season. It'll be like, you will tell. <laughs> I'm actually excited to work here and have a look at some of your metrics when we do start to see the pickup in traffic because last bull market, it was between Bitpanda, the exchange, yeah. and coin market cap. So getting to have an eye in on some of that retail data that then we would make available on socials 
It's crazy. When the markets are here, you absolutely know about it. You can tell when things are starting to heat yeah. up, when people are tweeting about socials. There is quite a few data aggregator sites as well that will push these social metrics, like Luna Crush is one of them, Santiment. Yeah. They'll show who's tweeting about what and what percentage increase that is on the week, say. And that's also a good indicator of just general like retail traffic and, yeah, and interest. Exactly. I mean, to give you an indication, um, back in the previous cycle, what we just broke a million subscribers and, and there was days in which we pick up more than 10,000 subscribers a day, a day. Now we're probably averaging about, I don't know, it, it ranges um, about 100 to 200 average, but sometimes we get a big day, but like, yeah, 10,000 in a day. And then sometimes you'd have 10,000 day after day. So you can see so that. So if you're not subscribed yet, guys, yeah. make Go sure subscribe. you do so. We're yeah. keeping an eye on accounts. You are, your, your subscriptions are the altcoin indicator. So, yes, you know, they are guys, altcoin indicator. Yeah. So our portfolios <laughs> need you. Yeah. Marco de Fonseca is asking, I'm thinking of moving some atom into its ecosystem. Yeah. Which projects are you most interested in? Thanks. So you Thanks, you hold Atom as well, right? And I do hold yeah. Atom. So this is a perfect question for you because you're also thinking about investing in, or you have invested in a lot of other Cosmos-based projects, right? Yes, true. So this is actually, Marco, this has come at the perfect time. And if you are on the Coin Bureau Discord, you will have seen that I did a post about this earlier this week. So I actually have started to unstake some of my Atom, which is a 21-day process to unstake yeah. my Atom. I did not realize Wish I knew sooner. No, um, but anyway, so I'm unrestaking some of my Atom because I will look to remove it and allocate it into the uh, Cosmos ecosystem. Just because I recently became an injective ninja. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's great there to join go. the family. Yeah. It's Welcome very exciting. Welcome on board. It's a great time to be. <laughs> so we have to do that. Welcome to <laughs> um, So, first of all, I think there is some bullish news that is coming out for Atom and the Cosmos ecosystem. One of the ones being Babylon is something that's coming out soon, which is Bitcoin staking on the Cosmos ecosystem. This came out in press releases this week. Van Eck had reported um, the end of December 2023 that Bitcoin staking on different chains is a narrative that they're keeping an eye out for for this year, for 2024. We actually went to a Babylon yeah. lunch and met some of the team. Um, and the, David Sear, the founder, yeah, that's great. You know, yeah. Exciting project for sure. And it's one of the really interesting narratives that I think people can get on board with this year that are like kind of pro ecosystem and keeping things moving along. That being said, Atom is kind of moving at the moment. In crypto terms, it feels a little bit like a safe haven, Japanese yen or Swiss franc as a cryptocurrency. It's it's moving slow. I've not seen the gains that I've seen across like Tia, for example, yeah. that hit an all-time high recently. You say. guys say, yeah, say's been moving crazy. So say's had really impressive performance. 22,000 new users, 174,000 active users, um, and total users as almost 1 million. So Crypto Cito is a account that we follow. He's yeah. a friend of the Bureau. Yeah. He's, I the, gave him he's the Cosmos Pro, yeah. He is a Cosmos Pro. Gotta go and follow his channel. Um, yeah, he covers all of this and will give you a lot of the inside alpha on Cosmos uh, related projects and the whole Cosmos ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in terms of me personally, um, I don't hold Atom, but in terms of Cosmos based uh, projects that I do own, um, obviously you guys know I hold Injective. So I'm currently staking all my INJ and uh, through numerous different validators. I also, uh, in terms of other interesting projects though that I don't hold, but are on my uh, watch list, obviously you mentioned Celestia, Tia. I love the idea of the concept of modular blockchains. Mm -hmm. If you guys want uh, a complete overview of Celestia, we have got a main channel review, so I will refer you to that. So it's a very exciting project. Um, few things I'll worry about a little bit, Lee, a little bit are, of course, like uh, the um, supply. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's upcoming supply of about an unlock of 200 million in, 20, in October, and then there's about 800 million that could come uh, unlocked within the next two years, which is obviously could impact on price. There's also um, a challenge, this new dimension a recent airdrop of a project which is a similar concept of modular blockchains so but either way they're both on cosmos it's very exciting babylon as you mentioned i'm also very excited about that the whole concept of being able to of bitcoin hodlers being able to utilize their bitcoin and earn yield and secure other proof of stake chains um in a non-custodial way right yeah so no more cool. block five custodial crap mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean a uh, very exciting ecosystem cosmos a lot of exciting projects built on top of it but i will again refer you to uh, crypto Cito if you want to deeper dive on a lot of these things. And we've done reviews on, like I say, Celestia on the main channel mm -hmm. and also Say we have done on the uh, Coin Bureau Club. So if you guys are a subscriber there, 
you'll have seen I've done a review there. Yes, and if you are looking to hear from the horse's mouth, we did have an interview with Eric from, who is, oh sorry, Ethan Buckland, mm. who's the co-founder of Cosmos, yeah. who's also giving a highlights for some yeah. narratives within the Cosmos ecosystem that he's keeping an eye out for too. And his rap game. And his rap game, which yeah. is also very impressive. Cool. Probably yeah. the best rapper I've heard in crypto. Best crypto rapper, that's his lot. <laughs> So next we have a question from MZ Arham, which is odds of getting hired by a crypto company in Dubai when you're not an engineer or a programmer? Mm, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's a good question, but I think that, um, you know, it's pretty strong. Like you don't, there's, you'd have to think about the firstly, there's many crypto, com crypto companies are wide and diverse. Yes. Right? I mean, not even just think about Dubai, crypto companies need to hire a whole different amount of roles, right? Mm -hmm. From HR to business man, business development to operations, uh, so uh, to social media to marketing, um, right? So it's like you don't. There's only the right ones who develop in blockchains, maybe an exchange. You develop in a tech solution, then you may need blockchain engineers. But there are a wide, wide range of skill sets that crypto company and roles that crypto companies are trying to fill yeah. in Dubai and globally, right? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so yeah, the odds are pretty strong because there's many roles. And speaking of which. Um, and if you're looking for a job with a crypto company in Dubai, working with some great, you know, personalities, then uh, the Coin Bureau, <laughs> we're actually looking for a, a social media analyst, a social media manager. Um, I will leave a link to the description and uh, the, the process to apply. But uh, yeah, if you'd love to work in a Dubai office and with us, then uh, that role is also open. So if you're looking for something, you're not a blockchain engineer, and if you've got some your social game is on top and you've also got good crypto knowledge, obviously. We'd love to hear from you. So yeah, that's one shot over there for the extra job position. <laughs> so the next question is from NTMMP and he or she is asking, is the team farming airdrops? Oh, good question. So I can't speak on behalf of the whole team, but mm. I personally right now am not farming airdrops. I, the last airdrop that I took part in was Arbitrum in 2022. Mm, I believe yeah. it was about a year, a year and a bit ago. It was a while. It feels like a long time yeah. ago. It feels like a very long time. And it was because I also had some people that were more in depth into the crypto space that were like, you hold some Arbitrum. This is how, make sure that you're, you are eligible. So make sure you can claim it and to follow it through. It is a full-time job yeah. for you to monitor yeah. the airdropping scene. I do keep an eye on some people's Twitter X accounts that are, Constantly keeping an eye out for, I think Acash has recently mm. announced they've got an airdrop coming up, so they have a medium post about it. But it is constantly a lot of kind of... Starknet had a big one this week. Yeah. Yes. So there's a big appetite for airdrops at the moment. And yeah. I think actually for entry points for people that are looking to get into crypto, airdrops are a fantastic idea for people that are looking to yeah. keep an eye out. 100%. Um, I, will, I will agree that it is quite labor intensive in the sense yeah. that you have to spend a lot of time on it back in the 2020 cycle i did a lot of farming so how oh, did you yeah uh, in the DeFi summer uh uni dydx mm -hmm. one inch comp all of the DeFi lending protocols yeah. on ethereum those early days and i made quite a bit of mint from it but um in the most recent cycle yeah i just don't have the time unfortunately um and it is something you need to keep on top of it mm -hmm. uh you need to there's a lot of the different um you know rules and processes that you have to follow and metrics and KPIs you have to meet uh, sometimes yeah. to, to uh, get these things. Um, you have to follow a number of different accounts. Sometimes you have to be early and sometimes you can miss in the sense that you do all the right steps and you do, or you just miss a particular threshold and people feel aggrieved by it. Um, but yeah, I think that if you, if you do have enough time to spend on it, uh, you can make good money. There's been some really crazy airdrops recently. Yeah. Um, and it's actually something where um, we actually have a, um, some researchers in the Coin Bureau Club Discord server who give a lot of ins good alpha on um, airdrops and have done analysis on this. So uh, you can take a look there. And we're also looking at opportunities to increase our airdrops coverage, both in the server and more generally, because I know that it is an exciting opportunity within the crypto space that just requires time and yes. maybe a little bit of capital, mm -hmm. but sometimes not even capital. Like if you, for instance, in the StarkNet one, it was just developers who got airdrops for GitHub commits. But yeah, I would, uh, we would looking to increase our coverage for airdrops. I personally don't farm it, um, but uh, you know, it is an opportunity you guys should consider if you have the time. And a little bit of word of caution as well. If you are monitoring, for example, different Discord channels or Twitter threads, 
do be careful what links you follow when it yeah. comes to redirecting oh, yeah. you through to airdrop. It's just because I have heard some horror stories. And I think a word of caution at this moment, the last thing you want to do is jeopardize your current bags for potentially something a little bit extra. So many scams and drainers out there, guys. Yes. Just be careful, mm -hmm. you know. Cool. Okay, so Sam Lal DG said, what's up, Sui's butt lately? I'm glad the project is getting some attention. What's up, it's butt fireworks. <laughs> fireworks. We both hold Sui though, so we, we can do. speak to this. I, I picked up Sui about three weeks ago or so, and it's up right like 30%, so it's looking good. Um, and it's not just the price action that's been going crazy on Sui. Uh, so over the past three months, TVL on Sui Network has been one of the fastest growing TVLs. It's gone from 90 million to 560 million. Uh, and that's because Sui as a blockchain is apparently, um, it's a very easy to develop on. Um, the programming language Move is a lot easier than a lot of the other programming languages. Yeah. And um, it's, they've got a lot of in developer incentives. And I've spoken, I've spoken to some people within our server, developers who said, you know, it's a lot easier to develop on the likes of Sui than say, for example. Um, and it's obviously very, uh, uh, very fast performance blockchain. It's the, out of the DM. It used to be part of Facebook's DM. It's yes. an Aptos use, use oh, based off the same inf um, early uh, architecture. And it's easier to onboard for newbies because they've got ZK login and ZK sync. So, um, and uh, also, of course, Mr. Labs, they got over $300 million in funding. Yes. A lot of, lot of money behind them. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we do have a main channel video on Sui as well, but it's a bit old, I think, in the sense it's almost a year. So, a lot has happened since. So, maybe we could do an update at some point. Who knows? But yeah, I think that's just mainly what's up. Well, you got anything to add? What do you think? Yeah, so similar to you, I, I got into Sui around the same time, um, maybe a little bit earlier, but yeah, it's neither here nor there. I should, I should, but you didn't didn't disclose it uh, to the to the team, and I was like, damn, okay, now. I did on I the Q and A. On the Q, oh yeah, yeah. On the Q and A. But does that the same day or? And the day after. Yeah, but the day, but yeah, I still rallied by ten percent in that in that period, that twenty four hour period. So you know. So it no. didn't happen. Okay, this is true. So we always, we're, we're quite competitive with our portfolios <laughs> here in the bureau. And we will say like, okay, we bought this. And then if it goes up 25%, it's like, but you didn't tell us about it. So it didn't happen. Yeah. You could be lying. Anyway. Um, but it could also be a situation you tell someone to buy something. And, and, and it goes know. down. So <laughs> there's a lot going on. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of responsibility we hold yeah. here. Um, I'm also not sure if the Solana outage had something to do with the price as well. Because Sui had not had so much price action since kind of October, I was watching and the price was pretty mm. steady. And then all of a sudden in the last month, it has really picked up some quite significant momentum. So I'm not sure if that also had something to do with it, but one would assume so, that yeah. when you have an outage on a larger competitor, that then the, the one which is a little bit more consistent and still equally kind of fast and easy to build on has a pretty strong Absolutely. argument to move forward. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, that's a good theory as well. And it potentially also some of the L2s um, Ethereum L2s, uh, like I say, because it's easy to develop on. They have these 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 quests that developers can do that um, you know increases the de the demand to build on top of Sui. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's what's up. Bullish on Sui. Juris Aventa, how was life in Dubai worth the move? Hmm. Yeah. So uh, well, there's many uh, there's many factors. Okay, I guess like I say, Coinbase Bureau moved about two years ago. Why did we move? Worth the move? Well. Let me give a bit of a Dubai shill for a bit. Um, for, for one, I think many people think that, oh, you moved to Dubai, oh, crypto tax, no taxes, blah, blah. That's not the case. I mean, for one, the ecosystem here is amazing. Like many people in the crypto space have moved here, but not just the crypto space. People from wide different industries in tech um, have moved here. And it's obviously creates a great ecosystem where you can meet like-minded people in these networking yeah. events and it becomes a center of gravity. And that's cool for from the perspective of a team which has mostly been remote up until two years when we moved here. So that was that's one. Mm -hmm. Two, it's no crime. Like at no. all. So that's one point. Obviously, for people moving from Europe when there's a lot of crime going on, uh, it's a good it's a good state of mind, especially if people are in crypto space, right? Yes, because, this is true. Like if you are a crypto familiar yeah. face, you can walk around. There's no issues. I know YouTubers that have left a hundred thousand dollar watches in their gym, come back the next day, and it's still there. Yeah, and there's a meme about this guy who left his car keys on his Rolls Royce uh, Cullinan outside the gym here, and he came back and picked it up. So yeah, try to do that in, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to name any other cities, but try and do that in, in your city and see how long it stays there. Obviously, there's also world class infrastructure here, yeah. right? And that's a good point around travel, right? So if Dubai is such a well-located place, mm -hmm. and uh, Dubai International is a central hub, so you can get literally get anywhere, mostly with the direct flight, Asia, Europe, 
Americas, you know, Australia, Africa. It's a great place if you like to travel and you want a central base. And in terms of location as well, also time zones, right? So the cool thing about us is like we're usually awake long before the US so we can get up go with the crypto news. Asia's yeah. about to go to bed so we can kind of like keep up the, the data there and the, and the information. Shoot our videos, it goes out for the US. Um, so yeah, it's time zone wise, it's great. Uh, immigration is relatively easy compared to other cities and places. Um, yeah. I don't know if you, you've lived in a few other places, right? So you, I have, yeah. yes. But that was back when the UK was still part of the EU, right? Yes. And then I was trying to move to Vienna after Brexit and it was mission impossible. There we so go. Yeah. Dubai Same. is a cultural melting pot. Safe. The airport is extremely fast to get through customs and security. It's like 20 minutes yeah. last year in the cab yeah. with your luggage. It's amazing. Also the sunshine. If you guys are based in Europe, it is sunny. Probably. Yeah. All the time. It, yeah. It minus rains five days times. a year. Yeah. Two to three times a year, maybe a little bit of rain. But uh, about summers, of course. A little bit hot. They get a little bit hot, right? So if summer's the time where you, you know, you probably want to, to travel. Um, mm -hmm. Although it's livable, you can eat, everything's air conditioned, right? These yeah. activities, uh, you know, it's one of those things where you just got to realize that summers are really hot. It is, after all, a reclaimed, you know, desert, right? So, and then also, thing Dubai has become quite expensive recently. I think, right? Oh, you know, Dubai is expensive. Yeah, it has because that's lots of people are moving here, right? I went to a Chinese supermarket last week because it was Chinese New Year. Yeah. Eight strawberries, guess how much? In dollars or dirhams? I mean, Let's do it in dollars, just in for dollars, everyone. And you guys can comment your thoughts. Eight strawberries, four dollars. They were big strawberries. Four dollars. Fifty-three dollars. Fifty-three dollars? Two hundred and seventy-five dirhams. Fifty-three dollars? <laughs> I took a photo. I will, yeah. What were these strawberries made of? Like, were they, they, were they, they grown, they were they were grown with, they like, were like this Evian size. water or what? Like, <laughs> Did they, did, they, did they play music for these strawberries so that they had the <laughs> best nutrients? Like, I want to try these strawberries. They were expensive. <laughs> okay. Be, okay, so things are, so, okay, cool. So there's very expensive strawberries. Okay, okay. Point is, Dubai's become expensive. Look, to be fair, like, they have to import all their food, right? Yeah. It's like, it's, it's just the nature of the things because it's obviously, uh, I don't know if there's a place to grow strawberries here in, this, in, in, in the UAE. But it's obviously a very expensive place from that, from, from some of the produce. Our property market has also been booming recently. That makes red quite expensive, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, so you need to be, so that's, but still compared to like the likes of London, Toronto, Vancouver, New York, uh, Melbourne, a lot of these other big metropolitan cities, Dubai uh, property market and property prices are still relatively lower. Yeah. So it's still booming, but it's, it's uh, still lower than other places. So there's, there's a lot to talk about Dubai. I'm actually thinking of potentially of doing a video on uh, the Coin Bureau experience moving to oh, Dubai. Yeah, yeah, and then a little day in the life. Yeah. Me, you, a guy. Yeah. Show, <laughs> exactly. See who has the most fun. Yeah, the yeah that like. would be a day in the life of a crypto, crypto company in Dubai. And you'll see. <laughs> How boring we all are. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should, yeah, I mean, that is true. Guy, that's one thing Guy didn't want to do. And it's the, the day in the life of the crypto guy. Because you guys would be like, there's Guy on his scooter. He's like, <laughs> It's not a Lamborghini, guys. You know, we are hard workers. We give back all of our time to the community. We don't go and yeah. flame out in Lamborghinis like most of the other. All, all my other crypto friends here are like, you guys are all, I'm like, I'm in the office at half past eight in the morning and I'm the last one to get in. Everyone's like, oh my God, half past eight? That's so early. Yeah. We've got to get the content for you guys, yeah, yeah. you know? The things we do, man. Yeah, yeah. Man. on the mission. <laughs> so uh, next question is from Nacho Gonzalez. Great username. Great, great username. And... He's asking, what did you do before being YouTubers slash analysts? Great question. I first started my broadcasting journalism career as a radio presenter. So mm. I was Radio Cardiff, 98.7 FM. Those of you in Wales will know Sparking Up the Airways. It was hip hop and reggae radio station. I was a newsreader for two mornings a week, starting at 5 a.m. And then also drive time co-host. Driving you home with some old school R and B classics. So is this why you a celebrity in Wales? Is this why Jess is the celebrity? Not nothing to do with her crypto. It's mostly she was just uh, the but reggae like star, the reggae radio star. And you know, I Jammer. would love when <laughs> come on when when crypto kind of booms and I've stacked all my stats. I yeah. would love to go back to radio. I think it's so fun. I love music, so it'd be a cool vibe. You can do like a crypto radio, crypto themed radio station. Yeah, like a, a Friday night drive yeah. time show. Let me guys. Let and me the only songs on option are crypto related songs. Oh, you know, God. Little then bubble, it was you know. Some <laughs> little hip hop remixes yeah. with some Bitcoin words in there. What about you? What did you do before being a YouTuber analyst? Oh, man. Uh, uh, for all my sins, yeah, uh, you guys may have known, I used to work in TradFi. 
So yeah, an investment bank in, uh, in Goldman Sachs in London. Uh, did it for a few years, realized that, damn, this isn't what I really dreamed about. You know, all that glows is not golden. It's true. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just wanted to do something more exciting in a new and transformative technology. Realized TradFi wasn't fit for purpose. Uh, got into one or two startups uh, and then fell down the crypto rabbit hole, discovered Bitcoin and crypto, fell down the crypto rabbit hole. And then, uh, yeah, and then just found a coin bureau back in 2017. Uh, and the rest, as they say, is history. Is history, yeah. So we both used to work for a bank. Mine was more of like a Forex bank, Forex bank. as a Forex journalist and commodities and FX yeah. reporter. But what was that again? It was Duke's Duke Coffee Bank, yeah. Switzerland, right? Yes, yeah. back mm. at Geneva, mm. Geneva and Latvia between the two. Cool. So we both. We, we kind of like discovered the finance we, route and then we just like decided no. Yeah, people no, no, either shit. find crypto through Silk Road or through TradFi and we found it through TradFi. There we go, there we go. Okay guys, so now those are all the questions. But as promised at the beginning, uh, we've got something a little extra special for you. And um, these are all of the uh, outtakes of the thumbnails we have from back in the day. Um, these are, some of these are actually pretty old, so like 2020, 2019. Okay. And uh, they're outtakes, so we didn't include them. And uh, Jessica's seen some of them. And uh, uh, I'm so excited. And these, we've kept these on the down low because like, these mm -hmm. cannot get out. But you know, as we mentioned in the beginning, a guy took a little bit of a cheap shot at us yeah, on Wednesday. You, you guys did the Q&A. You did the live stream. Yeah, you yeah. guys did great, by yeah. the way. Thank you. Thank you. But Guy opened it up with a little bit of a dig at yeah. both me and Nick. Yeah, so. I was like, that's, wow, that's a, that's a double combo, like a powwow, because yeah. both of us got offended by it. But and blondes so never forget. Yeah, so, so here we go. So this, now what we're going to do is we're going to go, I'm going to go through these. We'll obviously put them up on the screen. And some of them, Jess will have seen, some of them they, she wouldn't have. And we're going to give some commentary on it. Okay. Cool. So the first one. <laughs> <laughs> so this so, is guy looking stunning yeah he's uh he's looking up into the wilderness as he's riding his uni swap unicorn <laughs> he looks optimistic he looks he's, excited for the like, future he's, he's he's in wonderland he's in his crypto wonderland with his unicorn um and uh yeah not a bother in the world you did know. you ever watch the youtube video of like charlie no no which, okay this it's uh, like the, it's a unicorn if you guys know on youtube it's okay so that was a, a, a i'll take for uni swap Right. We thought we we're going to put Guy, and he, there was a few of these in the back. We had said, Guy, you have to pretend you're riding a horse. So you've got to put the reins out. And there's some of them, the most crazy, like, outtakes for that. <laughs> and this was uh, some really cool Photoshop going on with <laughs> Guy on his Uniswap unicorn. So that's the first one. Second one, Guy down the, crypt <laughs> <laughs> guy down the crypto rabbit hole. Can you, can you imagine you riding, you run, you're walking on the grass and you're like, you're walking, you know, you're going to, to meet a friend and then you, you see this hole and then it up pops this. <gasps> Do you want to know about crypto? And then you're like, nine, 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 I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, exactly. It's like, guys, I think, um, it's, you know, like, you know, it's like, it could be it. You know, you've seen it, the scene when he's like, the, <laughs> when the clown is inside the, um, the drain. He's like, come over, come over. Let me teach you about some crypto. And then he pulls you in and... <laughs> Guy, we love you really. We love we love him really. Okay, next one. Okay. Mm. I'm nervous because I think the rest of the ones I have. <laughs> <laughs> is this guy Uniswap outtake? No, no, this is not Uniswap outtake. <laughs> this was. This is terrifying. <laughs> this was guy. Picture you on a roller coaster. <laughs> you're on the crypto roller coaster and you're going downhill. This is what we told him to do. And he's got quite a few of these, actually. Yeah. And I think we actually used one. <laughs> um, uh, but this was one of them that didn't... <laughs> he looks like he's scared of a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay. So that's a good one. That one's not seen. So um, where are we at? It's back when YouTubers yeah. did have their mouths open for thumbnails. That's, that's, that's a bit more de delightful. That's yes. delightful. Guy, but that, that shirt, though, it's a pretty loud <laughs> shirt. Uh, I think that um, he should, he should, we should wear that in the office sometimes, you know. Um, that, that shirt is loud. That, that, that basically just expresses, like, I'm just loud on my crypto island, you know. Oh, he's, like, retired. He's, he's retired. chilled. Yeah, he's chilled. Crypto tax, how to, you Forget know. It. Speaking of which, I think this was actually a, uh, on a thumbnail to do with... Um, Crypto, uh, crypto tax havens. And it looks guy, like it. Either crypto tax havens or how the rich are avoiding taxes and Gal was just sitting there and he's the rich guy. Like, 
cigar. In fact, we've done quite a few of these. We actually did one. It's on the on the channel, so you'll be able to find the thumbnail. But it was, you know, how the rich. It was also how the rich went to paying taxes, and it was a guy with this beautiful with this <laughs> model who we photoshopped in. On this yacht oh, I've seen him, this one. Yeah, this yacht behind him with the sun with the suit, and he's like, you know, Gordon Gecko esque. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, and um, you guys used to be really creative with the thumbnails. Uh, we got guy. Now here we go. It's another. I think it's another one of. The, I think it was also the roller coaster example. <laughs> side profile. The side so profile. Going, yeah, good. So this is like the you know the roller coaster mean with the Bitcoin going up and down. Oh yeah. yeah. So that's that where his... basically like he's now the side profile of the roller coaster Bitcoin guy. So um, both equally terrifying. Both yeah, but this one he looks half. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have a cutout of an astronaut in our office. Yeah. I think we could get this cut out and yeah. put next to the door. Yeah. So that when people look, come look, in, it's like, like hi. It's this like, guy being like hi and you could like <laughs> high five him if what do you guys think is that uh, should we do that i think we should yeah or we should make a, a sticker telegram sticker or a discord sticker laptop, with, with sticker. A laptop sticker that's it we should add another laptop sticker to our collection we can have guy there looking completely shocked at what he's like when you open the board morning in the portfolio and you look at your portfolio it's either like there's two expressions that expression is oh my god i'm doing so well and the other expression we looked at previously is oh my god my portfolio is in the shitter yeah they could be like a flip like a yes and a no sign you know yeah. it could be like if you're either like this or you're like that cool so you're ready for the grand finale yeah <laughs> What a time! What I'm surprised you guys were allowed to post that on the internet. <laughs> so, are you okay? I'm okay. This was um, <laughs> this was we were doing a thumbnail idea around diving into Kyber Swap, and uh, we were said bring some swimming gear in for this. The more you look at and it, this, the like there was quite a few variants of it. You've seen the other one, yes. the other one, which was kind of like, but this is the one where he decided to go. <laughs> Go all in, man. No zero, no, no half limits. I'm going all in. Guy is going and really getting ready to dive into Kyber Swap, guys. He's got his towel on him. It's even green. Kyber Swap is green. You to a T, obviously. And um, he's got his goggles on. Goggles on. He's got his goggles on. So he's going deep, man. Guy's going okay. deep into Kyber Swap. So if you saw this in your local swimming pool, what would you do? Uh, I would no, down no, no, no. <laughs> This is why we left the UK. Crime, yeah, crime yeah, was too yeah. high. So yeah, I mean, Hats that's off we, to him. that. Yeah, I mean, credit to him, man. Like dedication he takes, and how many more of those thumbnails took? And like, um, we laugh at it right now, but that took a lot of dedication. And uh, we don't do any more of those really crazy thumbnail ideas, which is kind of, a, but it's it's kind of a little bit less professional. Um, I think that we now, you guys know us anyway. We don't need to be too clickbaity with the mm -hmm. crazy open mouth memes that a lot of other. Uh, YouTubers tend to do these days. But uh, yeah, we've got some crazy collections from this. And actually, if you're a Coin Bureau Club subscriber, you will have also seen we've now started a Throwback Thursday. I love it. Where we post something from back in the day, Coin Bureau history, um, and uh, share with you guys there. So that's it for the Q&A today, guys. Uh, um, you know, obviously, we love getting your questions. And if you would like to submit them again, please, as you know, the Instagram will be linked to below. And uh, at about halfway through the week, we'll ask you to submit yours and we'll go through them at the end of the week. Um, we always love doing it. It's a great way to end our week. Thank you, Jess. This has been Thank fun. Thank you. This, yeah. What a great little giggle yeah, to start this, the weekend, yeah. guys. Well, like Thank I you. said, Guy, uh, please no more, uh, you know, it's, it's, low blows in any of the live streams because we've got we've got ammunition as well <laughs> cool guys enjoy your week and see you soon cheers